Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing our desk check in number five. Today I'm looking at Miri, Weatherlight Duelist. Miri's a cat man, that's fun. All right, so this is all about reviewing decks, mostly decks my friends have made. Um, so we are taking a look at Miri, Weatherlight Duelist. This deck is about limiting your opponent's options, particularly during your turn. So this deck is gonna Focus heavily on combat and heavily on kind of limiting what your opponents can do. Okay, so on uh, the, uh, I'm using the uh, card kingdom value here. It's 803.44 for this deck. So again, not budget. I usually do budget stuff. This is my not budget thing. Once again, this is an actual deck. All of these are real decks that someone has. It's not just something where it's like a hypothetical deck on Moxfield. I think those can be very good as well, but it is, you can really kind of tell the difference between like a hypothetical deck and like a deck someone actually uses, I think. And it was made by the same person who did the uh, Garth one I from my second video. Uh, yeah. This is a carefully planned deck, so yeah. When we get to the suggestion part, it's a little tricky making suggestions for decks that are very well put together. Also, I'm going to point out, I, I am recording this in a different spot than I usually do because my son is home again. Whenever my son is home, I always feel like I'm worried that he's going to like do something to ruin it. It's, and I've got to like go really fast and carefully. Kind of like shooting a hostage video, but anyway. Here we got our uh, Hangul. So if you want to learn Hangul during this magic video, I guess you can do that. Also, my uh, my son's Ban Ban fan art is on the wall, so you can uh, check that out too. Oh yeah, so th my thoughts on Miri. So this is a Selesnya commander. Very important to start with the color identity. Uh, I think it's a she. I put actually she, I'm pretty sure it's not a she now, but anyway. She limits the combat options of your opponents greatly. <clears throat> if combat, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, if combat matters commander was a thing, this, uh, this would be it. So again, we've got enchantment matters and artifact matters, things like that. I think this is like a combat commander, which is maybe not really a term, but yeah. I feel like it should be. There probably is a term for that and I just don't know it. Anyway. So, okay. Opponents only get one cre- Or, sorry, only get one creature to use against your combat. So one blocker, one attacker, and that's as long as Miri is tapped. So Miri does have to be tapped to activate this effect. How you tap Miri doesn't really matter. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Attacks. Attacks, not tapped. I'm going to immediately make a mistake. Okay, great. Okay, so 3-2 three, for 3. Again, 1 in Selesnya, so this green-white. And it, she... Uh, I keep saying she. I, is it a she? I, in some art, it looks like it is a she. I'm going to stick with she. Sure. First strike. When Miri Weatherlight Duelist attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. As long as the Muted Weatherlight Duelist is tapped, there you go, there's the tapped, no more than one creature can attack you each combat. So this limits your opponent's options so much that like, probably your opponents are just gonna be like attacking each other and leave you alone because attacking with only one creature every time, unless they've got like a Voltron thing, just doesn't really make sense. So this deck focuses on, oh sorry, key cards, right? This deck focuses on getting the most out of the commander. So it is very focused on the commander. That's one thing I like about this one. It has cat typal and several, or cat kindred, whatever you want to call it, and several other effects that limit your opponent's options. This makes it much more difficult to target you or attack you. This really does kind of put a hitch into a lot of decks. There's a lot of effects that this deck has that like just prevent other strategies from working against you to begin with. So this is very effective. It's very reactive though as well. Um, a lot of people don't like that kind of style of play. I think they want things that more are like, this helps me in this way, not this prevents 
other people from being able to affect me negatively, right? It's uh, same with like uh, a lot of uh, kind of non-standard pillow fort things. I think like if there's a card where uh, if someone attacks you, you draw a card. I think that's actually better than like if they, they have to pay two mana to attack you with a creature. That's actually preferable in my eyes because like it will have the same effect, right? They will say like, oh, this is helping him rather than costing me. Uh, or it's it's very similar. Anyway, okay. Okay, yeah. This is about limiting the options. I just called it nope. Dragon Lord Dromoka and Katsuo Malmet Exemplar. These basically do the same thing in the deck in that, yeah, your opponent's cat cast spells during your turn. Dra Dragon Lord Dromoka is up to like 14 bucks. I've got one of them kicking around. I've got to figure out where I put it. Prowling uh, Serpo Leopard or Serpo Pard. I've got to say these words out loud. Serpo Pard. Okay, fine. Yeah. Because it's a cat snake. Yeah. Spells. This spell can't be countered. Creature spells you, uh, you control can't be countered. Shutting down options, right? Counter spells, they can't cast during your turn and they can't use against your creatures at all. Very, very good. Uh, Kenrith's Transformation. This is actually, this is on one of my earlier videos. I love this card. Especially in Commander, just turning off someone's Commander. Not sending it to, to the Command Zone. To the Command Zone can, you know, just get right back out again. This kind of traps it, right? So let's uh, let's look at that. So when Kenneth's transformation enters the battlefield, draw a card. That's always nice. And enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green elk with base power and toughness three three. So you almost make it into like a three three beast token. Like it's an elk, sure, but whatever. And it loses all powers, right? So really, what you've done is you've locked it down much more so even to, probably to be able to get it back it's going to have to the command zone and come back out again you are shutting it down much more effectively and m with most commander decks they are very very focused on the commander everything is built around the commander if you just turn off the commander the whole deck kind of grinds to a halt for one in a green that's just crazy i keep forgetting that allows you to draw a card as well Whew. Anyway, Alms Collector. This is another one that I have on a video. I love this one as well. It does have flash for three and a white. It is a three, four, and if an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that opponent each put, draw a card. Against so many blue decks, I think, again, this is one of those things where it's like, your opponents have to do something to trigger this so people don't like it as much. They want things that they trigger that seems more reliable. I don't know, like having effects that draw more than one card in Commander, very, very common. And you convert that into like, you're taking away their card draw and making it into also your card draw. Just very, very, very good. Anthems. So this deck has so many anthems. I got five here. That is not the only. I actually had to like keep switching them around because there's so many. Um, this is kind of like a top five anthems in the deck. There's not the best five. Or sorry, it's not the only five. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I think it is the best five. But anyway, other cats to control get plus one, plus one and have lifelink. Just everything gets lifelink. When Regal Cat uh, and when it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink, making tokens with Anthem. Very good combination. Code of Arms. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature on the battlefield that shares at least one creature type with it. So this helps everything, right? This applies to all creatures, not just your creatures. So if you're playing against another uh, Kindred deck, this could be, this could hurt you, but a lot of times, especially if you've got a lot of tokens, you're gonna to be able to like outpace them by quite a bit. 
Key Line Sovereign. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. Okay, not the best card, not the best anthem, but protection from a cat that grants protection from dogs is just like a flavor win all day. Anyway, I, I had this in another video as well. So whenever one or more cats you control deal combat down to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. You're getting damage through and it's just automatically like removal. Remember with your commander, as long as your commander is attacking, they can only have one blocker. So if you have two attackers, one is getting through. You only need two attackers and one will get through or two attackers per target. I guess if you have six, you could just target, you know, all three opponents and then destroy one of each thing they have. Just such a good card here. Pride Sovereign. Again, the plus one and plus one for each cat you control. Okay, it gets plus one. It doesn't grant it to the other things, so it's kind of like a reverse anthem, but anyway, exert, you can exert him, meaning you pay one, you tap him, or you pay a white, tap him. He doesn't untap next turn. That's what exert is. And create two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Again, these are uh, token generators. He can only do it once every two turns, unless you have some kind of untap effect though. So there's the downside, but still very useful. These are also not the only uh, ways to make uh, cat tokens with lifelink in the deck. So yeah, Woo. Finally, oh, the big one. Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. Uh, is Cenobite originally from Hellraiser? Did they did they have to like pay for that or something? Uh, am I confused or no? It's I don't think it's Cenobite. It's very similar to Cenobite in Hellraiser, right? Ah, anyway, she has vigilance, which we do not care about. Anyway, she costs seven, which is steep, obviously. <clears throat> Other creatures you control get plus one pl or plus one. Plus two, plus two. Other creatures you, your opponent's control get minus two, minus two. This is just wiping out most of the board for your opponents and making it even easier for you to just walk in and like, boom, knock them out. This is a crazy card in any deck, especially in this deck. They can only use one blocker, and then one blocker is going to have minus two, minus two. Also, like, probably every token thing they have is just going to melt. Cat power. So we're talking about, you know, our cat kindred here. So whenever Bramaz, king of Oreska, attacks, put a 1-1 cat creature onto the battlefield, and whenever he blocks, you put a 1-1 cat. Creature with token with uh, vigilance on the battlefield. Again, there these tokens to the lifelink have vigilance. I'd kind of prefer lifelink, but especially when you can attack and without getting blocked, vigilance is actually pretty awesome. I think maybe in this deck, vigilance is actually better. Anyway, Asika Chariot's power. It enters the battlefield to create two two green cat creature tokens. These are just straight up 2-2 two, two cat creature tokens. They have, they don't have Vigilance, they don't have Lifelink, nothing like that. So it feels kind of meh comparison, but by comparison, I mean. And whenever it attacks, create a token that's a copy of another target token you control. So you're just copying tokens with this as well. Again, with like Coat of Arms or something like that out, that's a lot, that's a lot. Steely Resolve. So as it comes into play, choose a creature type. I'm thinking cat. Creature of the chosen type can't be targets of spells or abilities. Oh, wow. Can't be targets of spells or abilities. This isn't like Ward, where it's like you have to pay extra or it gets countered, or there's no like or it gets countered text where you can get around it a bunch of ways. This is just straight up can't do it. Oh. This is like a 20 some dollar card, and understandably. Uh, Kwasili, Kwasali, Singers? Slingers, sorry, I got so focused on the saying the first thing right, I said the second thing wrong immediately. Kwasali Slingers? 
do have reach, which is nice. Uh, whenever it or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. So you've got two ways to just like automatically be blowing up things with your uh, cats. Just so much removal you can have between the two of those things. Crazy. Kindred summons. Okay, choose a creature type. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. Uh, put those cards into the battlefield and then shuffle the rest of the revealed cards into your library. Okay, so you make a whole bunch of cats and a whole bunch of cat, cat creature tokens, and then you cast this and you say cat, and then you just get a whole pile of like cat creatures equal to the number of cats you already had onto the battlefield. I don't have this in my win con list. I should. I should. Yeah, but yeah, this is a big win con right here. The plan. Okay, as usual, step one, mana base. Uh, yeah, okay, this is more like ramp, I guess, is ramp focused mana base. Uh, cats and cards is what I'm calling step two. And step three, win con. Okay, for mana base, we've got Flare of Cultivation. I love this card. Um, you may sacrifice a non-token green creature rather than play this spell's mana cost. So you could just kill a green creature and cast this for free. Search your library for two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one into the battlefield tapped and one into your hand. People always just want everything into the battlefield tapped. One into hand is really, really good. There's no point in ramping if you're not hitting your land drops, right? Land drop, first priority, ramp second priority, okay? So yeah. Get those land drops, cards that get a land to hand, really good actually, underrated. I think everyone just is like, wants it straight into the battlefield. Like, well, it's gonna end up there, don't worry. Traverse the Outlands. So search your land library for up to X basic land cards where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Put those cards in the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. This can build up, especially with anthem effects and things like that, this can build up the power very quickly of your creatures, and you take advantage of that by making the power into land. Woof! Marie, uh, Miari's Wake. So creatures you control get plus one, plus one, so we've got an anthem effect on this mana card. And whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. So you're doubling mana from lands also. Oh, oh, oh. The Great Hinge. Okay, this is one where the casting cost looks scary, but it has awesome reduction. So spell cost X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Having seven attack power on a creature in this deck, not hard to do at all. Casting this for two green, very likely. You can tap it. Add two green, gain two life. So again, you cast it for two green, immediately tap it for two green, and you get two life. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and draw a card. So it's a mana base, card draw engine, creature pump. The, I do have this card. I gotta actually put it in a deck, I think. I don't, I always wanna just keep things in my binders. I gotta stop. Sword of the Animist. This is another card I re I think I do actually have it in a deck. I believe I have two of these though. So whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it in the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. And equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, which is a yeah, sure, why not? Every time it attacks, you're basically getting any basic land you want, throwing it in the battlefield tapped. Oh boy. Kind of sorts out any kind of issue you might have with, you know, like your mana base or or not mana base. Yeah, well, basically your mana base. So yeah, just an amazing card. This is, I think, almost any commander deck should have this, especially, you know, if you've got more colors. If you've got a Woo Bird deck, this is like mandatory. I think. Anyway, cats and cards. 
So I'm calling this step two really the anthem effects and like the limitations are step two as well. So it's kind of hard to define here, but this is a big part of it. So drawing cards and getting cats. Okay, draw a card for each creature you control and you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. Once again, with those anthem effects, that can be a lot of creatures and a lot of life gained. Keeper of Fables. Again, he costs five mana, which is the downside there, but he's a four or five cat, which we like cats. And whenever one or more non-human creatures you control, deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So this is going to be another card draw, probably every combat, right? They can use one blocker only. So if you're attacking with two things, you're doing damage. You're going to get that through. You're going to get that bonus right there. Realm Walker. So this is a, an interesting way of looking at a card draw. As Realm Walker enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Cat, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. This is such a good ability, even if something only lets you look at the top card. Just knowing what's coming is very useful information. But this also says you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. So this might be like an extra card in your hand. It might not be. It does give you the ability to like know what's coming, especially when you got effects that like let you search your deck for a land and put it in tapped and then shuffle. If you know if you want the next card, you do you don't you know you don't use that thing that's gonna make you shuffle, basically. Vanquisher's banner. So it, uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It's plus one plus one. Again, another anthem effect. And whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. Whew. More card draw? Oh boy. And finally, Return of the Wild Speaker. This is probably the most uh, well-known one on this list. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. So there's a lot of effects that like give us bonuses for having creatures with high attack power. Non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus two, three until end of turn. There's another win con right there. I again, I did I put this off the list? I now I'm spacing. I did it late last night. Uh, anyway, win cons. Yeah, there you go. Number one. So territory scythe coat. Basically, your creatures with trample. Right? There's more than one. This is not the only one. Anything with Trample is going to be more effective in this deck than a regular deck because they can only have one blocker. If they only have one blocker blocking the thing with Trample, it's like, do you want your thing to die and have basically use this damage redu reduction is kind of the thing, or are you just going to block the other thing and let the Trample through? The, math, the kind of mental math that goes into that completely changes in this deck. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on this. Not until end of turn, plus one plus one counter. So this is going to get big very quickly. You kind of only really need that, but here is more to help out. So again, Lion Sash. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter on Lion Sash. So this is doubly useful in that you can pay one white to exile cards from your opponent's graveyards, and if it's a permanent card, you can put it, you can start stacking those plus one plus ones on this. Uh, very, very useful. And finally, yeah, Keeper of Feebles, just getting that extra card draw when you, it, again, this is not part of the win con, this is just an added benefit, all right? Because card draw is nice. Win con number two. I guess it's more of a finisher than win con, but anyway. Uh, basically the token strategy now. So whenever he attacks, create two 1-1 one, one white cat creature tokens with lifelink that are tapped on attacking. So he just makes more attackers. Oh, sorry, my son's coming. I gotta... Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, Mason, please. Skeleton. Yes, skeleton. There's no skeletons here. Oh, it's scary. We'll yeah, that out. is scary. It's coat of arms. I get ya. Okay, sorry about okay. that. Hey, oh. And so yeah, making those tokens and then buffing them up with the anthem effects and then yeah, making all of your opponent's stuff really small oh. with Elish Norn oh. and coat of arms. Mason, Mason, buddy. Okay. Can't, can't right now. Right. Sweetie, sweetie, please. Okay, just wait, I'm gonna pause. Oh, no, I did not. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Little bit of a hiccup there, but anyway. Okay, so. One thing I would point out, I think it's saying that there's like. Combat is two different win cons sounds kind of cheap or kind of like nonsensical maybe is a better word But in this deck the kind of like thinking behind it is very different When they can only use one blocker having trample or just having like a horde of kind of buffed up units it's kind of two different tracks that are very synergistic I guess is how what I mean to say Okay, and now my computer isn't behaving. Cool. This one is complicated to the point where it's almost like not highly useful, but it's it's an option. It's an option, that's what I'd say. It's not plan A, plan B, or it's plan C. It's something that you could use to win, and if you pulled it off, it would be amazing. Okay, so. Again, first of all, we're assuming there's a kind of a whole board state and hopefully you're not, you know, the lead, kind of in the lead where you actually want to be casting a board wipe, all right? This spell, again, Vanquish the Horde. This is a great one. It used to be cheap even like, I think two years ago, I feel like this is much cheaper. Maybe I'm confused. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield destroy all creatures again it's six white white having more than six creatures on the battlefield super likely in the game of commander if you have less than six creatures on the battlefield don't cast the board wave right you wouldn't even want to do it otherwise but anyway this basically it's going to be a board wipe for two mana crazy next up we want trove warden out so Again, it's two white white for a three four with vigilance. The main thing though is, uh, oh my gosh, he has landfall. And when, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, exile target permanent with mana value three or less or in your graveyard. And when, again, permanent, any permanent with mana value three or less. So not just creature. You can do this with a whole bunch of things. And when Trove Warden dies, each permanent put each permanent card exiled with it uh, onto the battlefield under its owner's control. So basically, this comes in and you start exiling things from your own graveyard. And when it dies, you're going to bounce everything back to your to your board and just be like ready to go. Okay, so. Uh, again, traverse the outlands, search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. This is great because you do need a creature, but as long as it's a creature with decent power, it'll work. Uh, oh, my son's back. Oh, good. There's Final Fantasy 3 monsters. I thought I put searching, I did a Google search for Final Fantasy 3 creatures and, uh, or monsters, and I thought that would distract him. There's the airship. Final Fantasy III airship, so yeah. That's what he's up to these days. Okay, sorry, so traverse the Outlands, you get at least a decently powerful creature and then you cast this and then a whole bunch of lands come in and trigger a whole bunch of landfall. Oh. The final step is just to kill Trove Warden somehow or get him killed and then everything comes back and you're ready to go. Okay, thank you, Mason. Okay, okay, buddy. Yeah, okay. 
Suggestion. So here I'm looking for upgrade cards that serve the same general purpose and fall under what I consider to be budget cards. And I always use two bucks or less on TCG player, not a sponsor. I don't want to get caught on that again, but anyway, or at least a reduction in cost. So this deck was built by the same person who made the Garth deck I uh, from the second episode, I mentioned that already. There are no real extra or useless cards in this deck, so the suggestions are more of a judgement call. I think a lot of these are, you can take them or leave them, these aren't clear like this is so much better or like there's no point in having one card kind of thing. Well there's one card I might, I think is pretty safe in the cut category but. Sweetie, please be- my son is still here, so yeah, hopefully he doesn't make a lot of noise. Sword of Plowshares. I know people love this card, and this is a very, very good card. But yeah, it's uh, what is it, re target removal in general, what I want to look for uh, is to have uh, enchantment and artifact removal. Creature removal? Particularly in this deck, I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. You want to have some for sure, but yeah, not all. This, uh, I guess if they have like death touch creatures, it might be really good. Otherwise, meh. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Balaget Recovery. Once again, good card. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Good card. It can also be a land. Is it really that good though? Or is it, can we find something better, I guess? Harrow, um, again, sacrifice a land to get two lands. Nice ramp card. We can definitely find better than that though. King of the Pride. The main thing, Anthem effect, right? We do love Anthem effects. Plus two plus one is better than average. Most are like plus one plus one, so this is better on attack at least. Uh, I still think we can beat that. Or at least get something that's like more valuable strategically than that. Finally, Cub Warden. Okay, so this is three and a white and it also has mutate cost of four. Two and white white. It's a lifeline cat that's a three five. Whenever this cat mutates, create two one one white cat creature tokens with flying. Or so with lifelink, not flying. Aye. Um. There's no other mutate cards in this deck, so this is the one. So this is the one card that I really think uh, could uh, get cut pretty easily. And yeah, my son is still in the background, so hopefully that doesn't isn't too much of a bother. So Swords of Plowshares, what would I replace that with? I'd go with Sundering Growth. I think this is not as good a card in general, but just destroy target artifact or enchantment. Targeting artifact or enchantments rather than uh, creature, obviously is destroy instead of exile as well. So this is a tough call, but also populate. This deck makes a lot of cat tokens. It can benefit from having a lot of tokens and it like, being able to make an extra one, I think is very, a uh, very synergistic thing at least. Balaged Recovery, again, our graveyard to hand card. Uh, very nice to have. Let's see though. Verdant Confluence, I think this is much better actually. It's much more expensive as well, but for six mana, four green green, so it costs twice as much, but Choose three, you may choose the same mode more than once. Put two plus one, one plus one counters on target creature, so this can help with the win cons. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Three cards instead of just one. Three. And finally, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto battlefield tap, then shuffle. So you can ramp up to three times if you want, or do any combination of them, right? It's six mana, which is a, sounds like a lot, but for each effect, you're only paying two mana. Uh, two mana per basic land onto the battlefield is actually pretty good. Two mana per 
card back to your hand isn't bad. And uh, two mana per two plus one plus one counters on any creature you want. That's actually pretty amazing. You can give a creature up to plus six plus six. Oh my, crazy. Harrow. Okay, Harrow. One of our ramp cards. Karamitra, God of, God of Harvest. This is actually just above my $2 rule now. I use it anyway because this is just like, this used to be under my $2 rule and now it's above and I'm very salty about it, I guess. Anyway, Indestructible, great start. As long as your devotion to green and white is less than seven, Karamitra isn't a creature. So again, board wipes, even board wipes that have like XL or something like that, if there are fewer creatures on the on the battlefield or you have fewer pips than seven, what, she'll just dodge it by knocking a creature, only being an enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search a library for a force or a planes card, put it on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle. Just ramp all day, right? Ramp, ramp, ramp. It does have to be cast a creature spell, not to create a token, right? It's not a creature enters the battlefield. It is cast a creature spell, but that's still going to be a whole lot of extra mana in this deck. I think just hands down better than Harrow. King of the Pride. Okay, so this is a, an anthem effect. It doesn't really do much else. Kahira the Orphan Guard. It has companion. We're not going to use companion, so we're just going to ignore it. It is a 3-2 for 3 with Vigilance, so not a bad start for a cat. And each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus 1, plus 1, and has Vigilance. I should have put this in another deck recently. I should have put this in my uh, Wita deck. Ah. Anyway, alright. So, okay. My son's... Pretending to creep around very quietly because it got stern with him and told him to quiet down. So now he's like doing the cartoonish tiptoe thing. Okay. Finally, Cub Warden. I think this is the one and only straight up just replaceable deck. Or a card in the deck. Not replaceable deck. Ba ba ba. Anyway. So. Even a Mutate. I'm going to do a video on Mutate because I think it is just so... There are things that are potentially good in general. It's just like, I talked about this in a video recently where I said it's like uh, putting the square peg in the circle hole. Okay, thank you, hi buddy. Anyway, okay, please don't. Mason, Mason. Oh, now you're a cat. We are talking about cats, so it kind of makes sense. But anyway, okay. Yeah, mutate is the square peg going in the circle hole in magic. Like, it, you know, they're kind of making it fit, but it doesn't really. It doesn't really make sense. I would change this with Kasali Ambusher, and this is under a dollar. Okay. It has reach, which is nice in this deck. For one, a green and a white, maybe. It ha and you can cast it as though it had flash if you're being attacked, and that you can also when you cast it with a with flash because you're being attacked, you cast it for free. It's like a free cat. So yeah, just like a crazy thing to be able to have, especially when they when they already it's already like difficult for them to attack you. When they finally do attack you, you're just like okay, now I get this for free. Uh, very funny, I think. Okay, so my final thought. This deck was built around the commander. So this is very all about synergy. I think you don't see a lot of decks that really like enhance every aspect of the commander so well. So yeah, it takes full advantage of every aspect of the commander. Uh, so yeah, it has the color identity with all the ramp and things like that. Uh, the creature type and its abilities. It really makes the most out of every part of the commander that it can. I think this is kind of like the model of what you should look for in a commander deck. Anyway, take it easy. <laughs> Thank you.